Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here and you enjoy what you are hearing, also, if you've already been here and you enjoy what you are listening to, do me and yourself a favor by clicking on that subscribe button and make sure to turn that bell icon to all. That way you don't miss any videos that I upload later on. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro, I will play. I'll read the first story, an ad will play. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I was at a sleepover with my friend, Anne. We were doing normal sleepover stuff, like playing video games and watching Netflix. We soon got bored, and Anne remembered about something she found in her basement just recently. It was a Ouija board, old and wooden, like in the movies. She decided to play with it, but I hesitated. I had a feeling this would not turn out well, but we started playing anyway. I convinced myself that it would be fun. We started out asking basic questions like, who would I marry and how many countries would I visit? Soon, things got worse. I went to the kitchen to grab some soda and pretzels to eat. When I came back, Anne's face looked terrified. While I was gone, she asked the Ouija board when she would die. It said, tomorrow, 3.45 p.m. I was absolutely scared out of my mind. 3.45 was when school ended, when she was normally picked up by her parents. I prayed that night for her to be okay, but my prayers weren't enough. I got a call from my mom later the next day saying that Anne was in a car accident with a semi-truck and her parents were okay, but she didn't survive. I will never forget that experience, and I warn you to never play with a Ouija board or you will lose your best friend like I did. Trust me, this is a true story. Even though the Ouija board has been used throughout history, back in the late 70s, we really didn't know too much about it. We thought, well, if it is advertised as a game living under a toy store's roof, what could go wrong, right? Well, so we got the Ouija board and loved to play with it. But at this point, we were kids, so I have no idea if one of my friends was moving back the ambulance on purpose. That I will never know. What I do know is that my friend came over and we decided to break out the game. We thought it was a game. We sat down across from each other, lightly putting a finger on the ambulance. As the direction said, started asking questions and it began to move. I don't remember what we were asking or what the answers were, but it wasn't the actual using of the board where something came out of the ordinary occurred. It was after. I put the board away in the bedroom next to mine, which wasn't being used at, at that time. A few days later, the same friend came over and brought her aunt's dog with her because she was taking care of the dog while her aunt was on vacation. Myself, my friend, and the dog were just sitting at the table, off the stairs talking about everyday things, and then there was silence for a moment, like a break in conversation. From the back room, a deep voice belted out my name clear as day, and it shook all of us to the core. The dog took off running down the stairs. We followed, running out of the house and not coming back until my father came home. After this, small but strange things would occur. 
The most notable was me always feeling like someone was standing behind me or following me. You know that feeling you get when someone is behind you, just staring at you? It was that same feeling, but a whole lot heavier. I put away the Ouija board for many, many years until high school. I had three friends over and we decided to break out the board one more time. Now, I don't remember who said what or who turned into the devil, but the events of that night scared me and once again, the board did not disappoint. We've all placed our fingers very carefully on the amulet and asked some random questions. And this went on for about an hour. All of a sudden, one of my friends jumps up and screamed. He swore that the person sitting across from him turned into the devil, red eyes and all. I am not sure if I believe this story because I wasn't the one seeing it, but the expression and fear on this guy's face said a lot. After this, I felt I had tortured myself enough. I gave the board to a friend and he put it in the trunk of his car and disposed of it. In my life, I have never and I will never touch another Ouija board again. Never. Even though the board was gone, I would still feel things all around me and see things from time to time. I distinctly remember seeing what looked like an energy outline in the shape of a human by my bedroom door. It looked like it was bending over and picking stuff up and putting it in a small garbage can. Strange. Yeah, I know. I did tell my mom this so she can verify the story. I was on the phone with her while all of this was happening. I eventually got to the point where I didn't want to see things anymore and hung a rosary around my bedpost and a cross overhead. I had enough and this is where I believe I began to push things out of my head and ignore my ability and the fact that I knew things when I shouldn't. See, they say that you begin to develop your psychic abilities when you are very young and most first notable experiences are seeing spirits. Was white man before or after the Ouija board? I don't know. Was white man the beginning of my journey as a psychic? I don't know that either. What I do know is that the spirits are real, psychics are real, and the Ouija board is most definitely real. What we should do is go to my house suggested Debbie thoughtfully. The rest of us looked convincing to take the fateful Friday afternoon from school. We were all 16 years of age that summer, and we we're ready for an adventure. So when the bell rang, signaling the end of lunch break, we headed out of the gate to freedom. As is usually the case in these sorts of situations, we quickly became bored, and we would want to watch television. Anytime no one fancied a snack and we decide against raiding the drinks cabinet, as that wasn't the kind of fun we were looking for. But we dared not venture outside for fear of being spotted during what should have been a school day. Somebody, I don't recall who, suggested playing Ouija. Most of the group was unfamiliar with the practice, so after giving them a brief explanation, I took it upon myself to gather the necessary apparatus. I repositioned the coffee table whilst Devi searched for pen and paper and found us a glass tumbler to use. With varying degrees of anticipation, we placed a finger on the glass, furtively glancing around the circle. As no one seemed keen on taking the lead, I myself ask the infamous question, is there somebody here? The room erupted in stifled giggles. Some girls were hiding behind cushions or had covered their faces with their palms. Others looked ready to cry. Although the two boys present put on a good show of false bravado, 
Undeterred, I continued my questions of the spirits and those who wanted to rejoin the circle. After a short while, the glass began to slowly orbit the letters. You would have cut the tension with a knife as we watched it travel past the alphabet, searching for the letters it required to convey its unearthly message. A lot of the communication was such utter gibberish, the lads in our midst began to act a fool, asking ridiculous questions. Which girls might grant them sexual favors? Who in the room is still a virgin? Displaying the kind of rashness adolescent boys so often do. But someone or something was in the room with us that day. The beaker picked up speed and quickly spelled out, silly boy accident. And although the boys brushed off the comment, it was evident their courage was waning. Subsequently, we received further garbled messages, but the only other which had any significance was the final communication of the day. For just as we were thinking of packing up and returning to our own homes, the glass was off again. We all stared in trepidation as the phrase, Nana Burn Pan, was revealed. Not unduly upset by this latest proclamation, we all parted the ways, leaving Debbie to tidy up before her parents returned from work, but not before arranging to meet up at the local recreation ground later that evening. Once safely back at home, all thoughts of the Ouija session were gone from my mind. I ate dinner with my family before changing out of my school uniform and heading to the park. Upon arrival, I noticed Susan, one of the girls who had been present that afternoon, appeared to be genuinely distressed. It transpired that earlier in the day, her grandma, calls her Nana, had scalded burn her arm quite badly on the kettle pan and was currently in the local accident and emergency department awaiting treatment. Understandably, we all became a little hysterical upon hearing such news. We were terrified to think one of the Ouija predictions had come to fruition. By 8 o'clock, almost all of the kids who had been at Debbie's that day had regrouped. We were just awaiting the arrival of Kevin and Jason. Just when we thought they weren't coming, a figure on a bicycle became apparent in the distance. Pedaling so fast it seemed the devil was chasing him. As he skidded to a halt, we realized it was Jason. He was as white as a sheet, and his face appeared snot-streaked and tear-stained. As we had all secretly feared further misfortune had transpired, Kevin had also become a casualty of our ill-considered dalliance with the spirit. His words punctuated by gasps and sobs. Jason explained what had happened. As they traveled to the park together, Kevin was on his skateboard, began riding recklessly. There were some girls on the opposite side of the street, and he was showing off, trying to impress them. Suddenly, he lost his footing, and his board slipped out beneath him. Then, as though propelled by unseen hands, Kevin was thrown into the path of an oncoming car. Although he sustained a fractured femur and a broken wrist, you'll be pleased to know Kevin made a full recovery. The rest of us vowed never to use a Ouija board again, but some of us didn't keep that promise. Well, to keep it short and sweet, since I've already shared this story with a lot of people, I was playing with a girl and the child that she aborted talked to her asking her why, saying he was her son. I would never get an abortion after that. I didn't even know she had one. And after she was bawling her eyes out, so I know it wasn't a trick, but since this is about Ouija boards, I always like to post the rules to make sure that you stay safe. These things are very dangerous. 
If you do not know what you are doing, the Ouija board can be extremely deadly or dangerous. There are rules that you must follow. There are evil spirits that can harm you if you invite them into your realm. You must always be careful with things that you don't fully understand. The main guidelines you want to stick to are 1. Do not leave the planchette on the board unintended, ever. If the planchette is on the board, make sure someone is holding it at all times. Number 2. Always say goodbye at the end of a session. Make sure the planchette goes to goodbye as well. If you do not, it's like setting a phone down without hanging up. The person can linger on the other line. Number 3. Never invite an entity to make a noise, to show its presence, or to invite it nearer you ever. You do not know what it is and what its intentions are, so please do not ever ask them to show themselves. Number four, don't let the planchette go from A to Z or one to zero, either forwards or backwards, because this is an incantation for a spirit to get into the human realm. If this happens, stop the planchette and say goodbye until it moves to goodbye. Number five, don't ever play it in a cemetery. That is just asking for trouble. The dead do not want to be disturbed. If someone goes to your house while you're resting and continuously calls you outside the door, I'm sure you wouldn't be very happy either. Number six, don't ever let the planchette make a figure eight circle repeatedly. This is also an incantation to pass into the human realm. Stop the planchette immediately and end the conversation. Number seven, always play with respect. Imagine a Ouija board as an online chat room where you post your telephone number and wait for someone to call you. You have no idea who is on that other line. Respect whomever you're talking to or don't play. You should be asking for consequences. And lastly, some tips I advise you. Start a conversation by asking if there is anyone who would like to speak with you. Patience is key. Just like a slow internet connection, it may take a few minutes to get a response. Don't bombard the board with questions. Ask something and wait a few minutes. If you don't get a response after a few minutes, try asking again. You may be having difficulty getting the answer you seek because of the way you're wording your question. Try changing it up a little and you may be able to get a better response. The way you word things is extremely important. Yes or no questions are usually the easiest for a spirit to answer. It's helpful to have paper and a writing utensil around to write down the session, especially if they are spelling out a word for you. Just make sure that you or another player has a hand on the planchette at all times during a session. If you're worried about talking to a good spirit and to avoid evil ones, you may be very well asking them if they can come with the light or simply by asking them if they are good spirit. Be careful. Sometimes demons will lie though. Most will be honest and have no shame in telling you that they are a demon. However, it won't ever hurt you to be cautious. And lastly, please don't use the Ouija board if you do not take it seriously. You can put you or others in danger. It is not a game. It's an oracle. It even says so on the box. Enjoy your time, but stay safe out there. Thinking back, not really sure what was going through my head and what prompted me to attempt such nefarious communication. Perhaps the notion could have been given credit due to the thought of innocent play, but after witnessing a few things, there was nothing innocent proven about it. It was at night, and I was with two others. We were just three teenagers looking for something to do, 
and there were no adults around. So we lit some candles in the room we were in, and also in the room next to us. The atmosphere was all aglow with ambient lighting as we readied the spirit board. Once the planchette was placed, we silenced our speech and cleared our minds. With our fingers on the communicative tool, we ask our first question, is there someone here? Moments passed and nothing happened. We were patient and ask again. That's when the planchette moved. Even though the movement was slight, it was still quite detected. Of course, we asked each other who was causing the action, but we all vowed that we were not responsible. The room was beginning to feel a bit tense, but we decided to continue. We ask a few more questions like, who are you? And when did you die? The typical questions of curiosity. What we got in response seemed innocent enough. We were told that the spirit was a female who had died many years prior in a train accident. That's when I started to feel uneasy because we were at home way out in the country, and there weren't any train tracks around for many miles. Then we asked if the spirit was there to cause us any harm, and we were told no. After that, we proceeded to ask if the spirit ever thought about coming back as a living person in the form of reincarnation. It replied that it already had done that, meaning that it had already been reborn. Our hearts raced and the looks on our faces were a pure shock and confusion. But we continued by asking, who have you been reincarnated into? It answered with the name of an individual with whom I hold very, very dear. Someone that I knew in fact had not been inhabited by the spirit. We questioned the spirit on how it could have been reincarnated as someone who we knew amongst the living. If they were communicating with us by using the Ouija board, a long, awkward pause lingered. There was no response through the planchette, but a candle that was sitting very securely in the center of a table in the next room all of a sudden fell over, making a loud noise. There was no explanation to how the candle could have fallen because we were all three hovering over the spirit board and there was no one else in the house. As frightened as we were, we asked the spirit one last question. Did you cause the candle to fall over? Its reply was, yes. Immediately, we stopped playing the Ouija board and quickly put it away. The remainder of the night, we stayed wide awake too scared to sleep. To this day, I don't know whatever happened to that Ouija board, and I don't really care. But I do know one thing for certain, and that is, I will never mess with the spirit board ever again. I absolutely believe in the paranormal, spirits, demons, ghosts, etc. I have only ever had one personal experience with anything of this nature. This past summer, my family and friends took a trip up to a resort in the mountains. It was me, my parents, younger sister and brother, and two of my friends. We rented out a pretty big condo in the resort that had a balcony. One night at around 1 a.m., I was hanging out on the balcony with my brother and my two friends. We were having a highly philosophical conversation and discussing topics such as existentialism. Ghosts were mentioned by my brother, let's just call him Ash, and I agreed that they existed. One of my friends, let's call him Chase, said that he was indifferent on the subject while my other friend, let's call him Brayden, said that everything paranormal was total bullshit. Immediately after Brayden voiced his opinion, I felt a presence. It's hard to explain exactly what I was experiencing, but it was along the lines of feeling watched, but from a very 
close distance, as if something was directly behind me. Goosebumps shot up my entire body, but I didn't say anything. Shortly after, Brayden said that he was feeling extremely uncomfortable. I feel like something is here. What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Do you not feel that? He exclaimed. Everyone looking around in shock, and we all confirmed the same feeling. I was a little bit freaked out, but I joked and told him he shouldn't have said that ghosts were bullshit, because he clearly just pissed off one. Apologetically, he kept repeating that he believed. Brayden has a strong mental fortitude, and I genuinely couldn't see why he tried to mess with us, especially due to the serious nature of our entire conversation. While my level of paranoia stayed the same, Brayden's condition seemed to worsen. He said that he didn't feel safe out there and wanted to go back inside. We all agreed, and right as we started to get up, he froze. I think it just communicated with me or something. I'm, I'm not shitting you. This is not okay. He started to insist that the time of 2 a.m. was really, really important, but he did not know why. At this point, everyone was pretty spooked and felt threatened, so we went along with it. It was around 1.25 at this point, and we tried to brainstorm what the possible significance of it might be. After a couple of ideas, my brother suggested that maybe we should try to communicate with it on a Ouija board. This seemed outlandish, and we didn't even have one, but Brayden said that he could sense that it was the answer. Granted, this all seems ridiculous, but what happened from there only gets crazier. Chase suggested that we just make one. So we did. We got a piece of paper and a shot glass from the kitchen and constructed our own Ouija board. We went on the internet and tried to make it as detailed as possible. We came up with a decent recreation, but were still skeptical of the whole situation. I even suggested that we should just knock it off and go to bed. Brayden wouldn't let it go, though. I figured that at least we could do was humor him, so we all circled around the board in the bedroom. We followed all the protocols and procedures from the internet and began. We all swore we wouldn't move it, etc., etc. While I'm aware of the ideomotor effect, the following events were certainly convincing. We asked for the spirit's name, and the first couple seconds, nothing happened. Then, the glass began to move slowly. It made its way towards T, then E, then D. Spelling Ted, of course. Everyone looked around in pessimistic disbelief. The ledger of the circle asked more questions. The spirit told us that he died from an accident. He asked a few more basic questions before asking, what happens when we die? The glass felt like it was moving faster this time, and with much force, it quickly spilled out. Say goodbye. Our next question being, can we say goodbye? With a response of yes. After these events, we all swore up and down that we aren't moving the glass and asked all sorts of accusatory questions to one another. I mean, how can a Ouija board have just really worked? It didn't make much sense to us. Then, a drawer behind us began to open slowly. Everyone was freaking out. I had slept in this room for two nights now, and the drawer never opened on its own like this. I walked up close to the drawer and felt force against my hand, but managed to close it anyway. Anyways, this could have been us freaking each other out over nothing. I thought that I'd share my story with you. Thank you for reading, and comments or any other suggestions would be helpful.
Has a Ouija board actually killed anyone? Well, potentially yes. I'm an ex-occultist. I was involved in witchcraft in my late teen, early adulthood, and I used to use a Ouija board alone. And one night, I almost became possessed. I'm unsure if a spirit entered in me, but it definitely attached itself to me. I had two brand new long stick candles on both sides and I fell into a trance. Was rocking back and forth and the room got so hot. Then, in an instant, everything stopped. I saw that only two minutes had gone by and both candles were melted down to nothing. Wax was all over my carpet, which tells me it was legit hot in there. My mother did the Ouija board when she was eight years old, and because of that, there is a familiar spirit in her and attached to our family line. In order to understand the severe consequences of playing the Ouija board, you need to understand the origins of where it came from. I believe 100% that the Ouija board was actually created by Satan to be used as a tool which opens doors for demonic possession. Way back in the day, a man who owned a merchant shop sold a bunch of different things in his shop. This is history, not a story. The man found this game sitting in his shop and didn't know where it came from or who had left it. After he discovered it really worked, as in the marker piece really does move and answer questions, since he couldn't find any history about it or who created it. He ended up getting a patent for it, and he sold a bunch of them. Soon after people would buy them, tons of cases were reported of people who used them, and they went insane and ended up killing themselves or other people, including the man who owned the merchant shop. He threw himself off a building. It wasn't until I messed around with it that I started having symptoms of mental illness, only which to later be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, where I was literally going insane. I would see hallucinations. I was delusional, disassociative, paranoid. At one point, I was standing outside my own body. I was cutting myself and I was suicidal to the point where I would wake up every day thinking how what way would be the best way to kill myself that day? Right before I was going to admit myself into the hospital, I cried out to God, telling him I need him, that I don't want to be like that anymore. And I am saying this with 100% truth. I woke up the next day cured. I no longer have borderline personality disorder. And when I prayed to God, repenting of the witchcraft and of the Ouija, I started the rock back and forth, and I felt the hotness leave me. When I felt the day, I unintentionally evoked a spirit. The fact that people became suicidal and murderous answers your question with a huge yes. In October of 2007, I was invited to conduct a session for a group of people as part of their Halloween festivities in the Spalding area, Lincolnshire. Having conducted a number of sessions for them in the past, I agreed to attend and conduct a session by their request at 3 o'clock a.m. as considered to be the witching hour. I produced a Hellgate board Please don't ask, because I will not tell you. An oak for the event again, something I had done before and used to get some really good responses with. The event started off normally, with the lighting of the candles, sealing of the glass, and a protection ritual. There was six of us, myself included, around the board and eight spectators, including my scriber, who was responsible for recording all of the board activity for review at a later time. We had a resident presence, our Fred, if you will, come through and spent a bit of time with us, much to the enjoyment of the group, before we said goodbye to him and let him move on. 
Things then went really quiet for a bit before we started to get another response. From the outstart, something just did not feel right with this presence. I can't explain it. There was just this feeling deep inside of me. We had a lot of glass movement, but at the time, it was very sporadic. It would give us no information and refuse to follow simple instructions, such as returning to the center of the board. Now, initially, there was nothing abnormal here. Jokers and clowns do this all the time before they settle down. However, the force on that glass was slowly getting more forceful the longer we tried to make actual communication with this new entity. As we progressed, the entity seemed to be getting more confident with itself, and the glass movement started to become even stronger, and it was spending more time trying to head to my line of limitation. Located in front of the Hellgate, with the group having to physically stop the glass on more than one occasion. All of this time, though, not a single thing had been said through the board. And at this point, we still had no idea who or what we were dealing with. After a few minutes of this, the glass finally started spelling out things. But at that moment, in time, it just appeared to be gibberish to us. It was my scriber that actually realized that we were getting messages through. The reason we could not understand what was being said was because everything was being given to us in reverse. Now, this is where I should have stopped the session, there and then, potentially facing a negative entity and closed the board. Instead, I let intrigue get the better of me and allow the session to continue something I have regretted for many years after this event. We continued to get responses, both in reverse and now normal phrasing, most threatening those on the board. And then we started receiving responses in what we found out after the event through research, Latin. In my whole spirit board career, I had never received anything in Latin during any previous events. I had heard about it happening through my teachings, and apparently it was not a good sign, but never experienced it. One phrase we got upon review that I will never forget was English reprobi, which we translated to fallen angel. During all this time, we never received a name for the entity, and the glass got that strong in its movements at one point. The six of us on the board were struggling to keep up with it. The session came to a finale, with people now starting to panic a little, with the glass making a direct line for Hellgate on the board. We quickly applied all the pressure we could to stop the glass, and I found myself shouting at the entity to return to the center of the board. The glass started moving a lot slower. Then it had all evening. I remember thinking that maybe it, it had used most of the energy during the dash on the board and fighting us to stop it. And then it positioned itself at the center. Then the glass imploded. Now understand this. This thing did not shatter outwards or crack and come apart. This thing went in on itself. This honestly was the second time in my life that I actually felt true fear. After being taken back for a few months and after gathering my thoughts, I conducted an impromptu cleansing ritual and we quickly and appropriately disposed of the board. Myself and three others experienced very disturbing nightmares following the event over the next few nights. And even more eerily, they all were very similar in nature. A very tall, dark figure taunting us from within shadows. Faceless people being horrifically tortured. And the devil of loved ones, all very graphic in nature. My marriage with my very loving wife also broke down very quickly after, as well as a run of my other bad luck that seemed to follow me for a period of time afterwards. I vowed following this event that I would never have anything to do with spirit boards again. 
and I have not touched one since, despite numerous requests over the years from people. I have previously met through holiday sessions for them or somewhere else. I still have contact with some of the people and who are still close friends that were there during that morning and witnessed the events that unfolded. We recollect the night and conversation occasionally and laugh about it now, but there still seems to be an uncomfortable feeling of just how lucky we were to get off as lightly as we did. There are things in this world we just cannot comprehend. Using spirit or Ouija boards can open doorways to things that are really not very nice at all. I believe we encountered a very negative entity that morning, even though I had done everything right and according to my teachings. This is why people who have used boards and had negative occurrences tell others to take heed and stay away from them. They are not paranoid nor overreacting. They have seen and experienced it for themselves, and they do not want to see others harmed, potentially go through a diabolical haunting or some other misadventure. So, it's after school on a regular day, and my best friend, let's call her Jane, she pulls out her Ouija board and we try to start playing. Keep in mind, this was a regular type of day for us. We usually played it after school every day, with no results yet, which was odd. A friend of ours, let's just call him John, suggested we play upstairs in this area, where it was rare for anyone to go there. Sometimes the odd couple would go to the upstairs spot and do things, if you know what I mean. But anyway, I had a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach, and I mentioned that to Jane and John. But they just told me that it was good, and we might get to see some cool results. So we get up there, then another friend of ours, let's just call her Casey, comes up too and joins us. With the four of us up there now, we start playing, even though I mentioned it wasn't a good idea due to the horrid feeling I had. So, we got in contact with a spirit, and who else do we contact besides Zozo? Here's a little background on who Zozo really is. Zozo is one of the more prominent and well-known demonic beings. From reality television shows to literature, Zozo is commonly reported as being behind paranormal activity and hauntings. What is Zozo? No one knows what Zozo looks like or what type of being he is, but those who have come in contact with him report terrifying experiences, most commonly contacted through a Ouija board he seems to be more of a powerful demonic entity with the potential to do significant physical and mental harm. He sometimes goes by other names such as Zozo, Zaza, Zo, or Pazuzu. He had been living around for hundreds of years. Is Zuzu limited to just the Ouija? While Zozo is most often connected to the Ouija board, it is possible that it can contact people outside of the game as well, through other means. People have reportedly made contact with him during hypnosis, automatic writing sessions, and electronic voice phenomena, or EVP. A more infamous encounter with Zozo was Darren Evans, a man from Oklahoma. He reportedly encountered Zozo while using his Ouija board with his girlfriend. The demon reportedly shared information with Evans from the other side, and he became obsessed with Ouija. But over time, Zozo became more sinister. Evans eventually had a nervous breakdown, claiming that demons were following him. The demon even threatened Evans' young daughter, saying he was going to steal her soul. She nearly died, and Evans realized he needed to take action. He pursued an exorcism to get Zozo away from his family, but it was a terrifying experience that left an impression. 
Evans now runs a site dedicated to warning people about the dangers of messing with Zozo. So, me and Casey are terrified. We scream and hurriedly ask if we can take our hands off the board. So after we got the permission from the demon, me and Casey took off down the stairs. After I calmed down for a bit, I didn't go all the way back, but I went close enough right around the corner so I could hear them if something went wrong. Keep in mind, I couldn't see them at all. It's just Jane and John playing the board, and me and Cassie are just listening from behind the corner. All of a sudden, I heard Jane scream intensely. I turned the corner to find Jane and John running down the hall towards me, with the board in Jane's hand and the planchette in John's hand. Jane falls and drops the board, and I run to her, and she starts sobbing. Not because she fell, but because of what happened. I held her for about ten minutes, until she was able to tell me what happened. So, John and Casey and me and Jane are there, and Jane tells me that she heard her long-dead grandmother's voice say, I love you. So, Jane calms down. And she says she wants to play again. So they convince me and Casey to play too. So I give in and play the game. We ask him a bunch of questions. So about 30 minutes in, I get this horrible pain in my chest, in my hand. And I couldn't breathe. Everyone started panicking and asking the demon if he was causing this. It moved to yes. So Jane tells him to stop and it stops. I regain air, and my head stops hurting, and after an hour, I realize that I'm losing energy and becoming very tired. We ask Zozo what was happening, and he told us he was draining our energy, which would explain why Zozo was moving so fast. So we all ask him to stop, but he doesn't. I felt a pressure on my shoulders, and when we ask why, it spelled out spirits. We asked how many there were on me, and it said three. There were seven on Jane. John and Casey were unaffected. I realized later that if Jane could hear her grandmother's voice, I asked if we could hear our friend Jen's voice. Jen died from the flu a few months back. He moved to no, and when we asked why, he said that she was in heaven. We asked to hear our friend Jonathan's voice. He had also died a few months back. And it said that he was in heaven as well. So, my dimwit friend John decides to ask Zozo if he could show himself. John looked through the planchette and described how he saw a man's head peeking from behind the staircase near us. We asked Zozo if that was him, and he moved it to yes. Jane then looked and saw the same thing, according to her, and saw a figure that looked like her grandma. We all kind of sat there in shock for a minute. Casey asked if he could move her glasses, if he was really there, and it moved to no. And we asked what he could do then, and he spelled touch, and then he spelled my name. All of a sudden, I felt a hit on my shoulder, as if somebody had hit me to knock me over. There was no one behind me. No wind could have just abruptly hit me like that. Long story short, I was terrified, and without asking permission, I took my hands off the board, started crying, we said goodbye, and I haven't touched that damn board since then. I am not one to believe in ghosts, spirits, or poltergeists, demons, and other paranormal oddities, though I do enjoy horror movies about them. But I am answering this question because of a true incident that happened to me back in the mid-1970s. I grew up in a small house in Southern California. Over the years, my mother added rooms to the house. When it was complete, one of the bedrooms ended up in the other center of the house and had no windows to the outside, only two doors. 
One door led to a hallway and the other led to a new living room that was added on. I had two brothers and none of us wanted that room as our bedroom because it was dark and had no natural light source. Our mother found it equitable to have us all rotate into the room in six month intervals. The closet in that room was where we put all of our old games, Monopoly, Clue, Mousetrap, etc. One of those games was our Ouija board, if you want to call it a game. We played with it for a short while when we were kids, but it was kind of creepy and, as children, always heard that messing with the spirit world could be dangerous. There are some odd things that happen while playing with that thing in our young minds. Seemed to be very weird, but we eventually moved on to other things. When it became my time to play in the room, I think I was around 16 or something, I found it annoying that something kept knocking on the closet from the inside like it was tumbling down from on top of the closet to the floor. I would constantly look into the closet to see what it was, but everything was always in place. It would happen at uneven intervals between every 15 to 25 minutes, 24 hours a day, every day and every night. I asked my brothers about it and they said it was the same for them. Had my mom listen to it and she couldn't find an explanation. After two years later, my mom bought a tool shed for the backyard. I ended up putting the Ouija board in the shed because it was still in good condition and I thought it would be wrong to throw it away. The knocking in the closet immediately stopped and never happened again. When we finally moved from the house, I figured it was best to not bring the board with us. As I said at the beginning, I don't believe in evil spirits and all that, and I have been an atheist for the last 40 years, but this is a true story that I cannot explain. And that, dear listeners, does bring a close to these true Ouija stories. I would like to take a moment and give a very special shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Amy Klemko, Anita V, Matt Davies, Dova Khaleesi, Ada Smith, Tammy Slayton, Colt Stonewall, Les Crispin, Samantha Place, Patty's niece, Denise S, Call Me Carter, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart, for without your support, this channel would not exist. Now, if you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. In the meantime, please take care of yourself and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.